Okay. So apparently, uh, in the news today, <laughs> YouTube, uh, first of all, is changing its uh, the way that you can do live streaming through your computer. So uh, YouTube app through Google Hangout will no longer be working as of April 25th, 2017. So those of you who have been using that route to do your live stream, you will need to change that route. So I hope that you all are off to a great and wonderful day. This is Wisdom Wednesday, I like to call it. And we have got plenty on our schedule to talk about today. Um, hopefully we will get to some of our read aloud for the day in the book. They came before Columbus by Ivan Van Sertima. And uh, we've been looking at Columbus and uh, his dealings with both uh, Isabella and Ferdinand, as well as Don Juan out of uh, Guinea. So um, we're going to continue looking at um, what was some of the early, early, early conflicts about what Columbus was doing. Uh, we saw yesterday that he was kind of, um, we call him the original OG, the original gangster. <laughs> he was kind of working both sides of the aisle and uh, making a killing in profit because really he was one of the very few people out on the ocean at that time exploring. Yes, my husband said he was a hustler. <laughs> so let's get into, uh, let's first of all, let's get into our topics for today. Topics for today. And okay. So, there is a phrase that people like to use a lot, and that phrase is Uncle Tom. I don't know if any of you have heard people using it lately um, or calling people Uncle Toms, things of that nature. But, um, yeah. So let's talk a little bit real quick about Uncle Tom because we do like to educate as we do our segment today. And I pulled this from the internet because it is a very, um, how shall I say, it's very succinct in its explanation as to um, why we should not be saying Uncle Tom or calling people who sell out, so to speak, Uncle Tom's. So let me go to that quickly. <clears throat> Why shouldn't we use the term Uncle Tom? Because the original term, according to the book, was actually Sambo. Somebody type that on the screen. Sambo, S-A-M-B-O, Sambo. All right. And so the post says, stop calling people Uncle Tom's. Uncle Tom was beaten to death by another slave, Sambo, because Uncle Tom would not beat other slaves. Um, after the success of Uncle Tom's Cabin, white people used Uncle Tom's character in their plays and road shows, but they made him display the characteristics of Sambo instead. Sambo is the bad guy, not Uncle Tom. So just want to clear that up. If you are going to uh, come after someone uh, for not uh, being on the side of whatever, if you, especially in terms of the black community, if you're going to call somebody anything, you really shouldn't be calling them Uncle Tom. You should actually be calling them Sambo. All right. So that is the correct term. So it's Wisdom Wednesday, and I want to share with you a verse of scripture coming from Psalm 18, verse 32 in that scripture is, God arms me with strength, and he makes my way perfect. Now, if you break that down, um, our artillery, really, as it says here, is strength. 
our weaponry is the strength that God gives us. And he makes my way perfect. Uh, if you look at that, he's not saying that he's going to make you perfect. Um, in the traditional sense that everybody thinks of perfect means uh, without fault or without mistake. Most of the time you see perfect in scripture, it actually is referring to maturity. So when God says, um, be ye perfect as I am perfect, he's actually talking about maturity. He's not talking about not being without any fault. So when people say, nobody's perfect, <laughs> you can actually say, well, actually, that's not true because God does require us to come to a level of maturity, either in um, what we know about him or either in different facets and aspects of our life. So there are areas in our life that we can be perfect or mature in and still need to develop in other parts of our life. And notice that the scripture there says, he makes my way perfect, right? So it's talking about God's guidance. It's, it's talking about God's direction. It's talking about God moving things out of your way um, that's going to allow you to go in the direction that he wants you to go in. But it starts with the fact that God arms me with strength. So where are you getting your strength from today? Are you getting it from your own self? Are you getting it from external things? Are you substituting God's strength for other other avenues and other vices in your life? Because we know that if you're using any kind of vice to get strength for your day, whether that's an intoxicant or whatever, we know that eventually those things tend to run out of effectiveness. Even someone who is dealing with something like alcoholism. Um, you know, many people say, well, I know I work with plenty of sober, supposedly sober alcoholics or what they call functional alcoholics. But after a while, that substance abuse is going to catch up with them. So we're not taking our strength today from outside things. We're taking our strength today from God. God arms me with strength and he makes my way perfect, Psalm 18, verse 32. So we talked a little bit about Uncle Tom, and that was our uh, word for the day. I also want to give you some vocabulary. As I said, we'll be doing this throughout the week. And this is actually a helpful vocabulary word because as we go past the inauguration, you're probably going to hear this word uh, more often than not. So I want to share it with you. And that word is jingoism. Jingoism. Or you can, or you also have the word jingoistic. Um, both of them are the, from the same root, which is jingoism. And jingoism actually means extreme nationalism characterized by belligerent foreign policy, chauvinistic patriotism. I know that was a mouthful. <laughs> Jingoism, extreme nationalism characterized by belligerent foreign policy, chauvinistic patriotism. In other words, patriotism that tends to exalt manhood above womanhood. And I think we can safely say that the incoming administration is definitely full of jingoistic behavior. All right. So that's the word for today is jingoism. Let's take a look at some of the things that's in the news today. Some of the things that matter to daring dialogues. So the first thing that is in the news today that I want to talk a little bit about and share with you is an army vet who was falsely arrested or rather arrested and falsely held. All right, let's read the story. This is coming from New York Daily News. Army vet falsely arrested says he endured taunts by pro-Trump cop. 
And this was reported by Christina Correga out of New York Daily News. An Army vet, veteran's quiet walk with his dog in a Brooklyn park turned into a long night in jail on a false arrest and being subjected to pro-Trump cops racial taunts, a new lawsuit says. Nigel Plowden, 35, was wrapping up a midnight walk with his dog in Crown Heights Park last August when two New York Police Department cops in a police van stopped and questioned him about being in the park after hours. The park didn't have any signs posted indicating it was closed, Plowden said, and the cops also didn't bother another white man who was there playing fetch with his dog. One of the officers, Nicholas Lois, allegedly asked Plowden for identification, but he had left it at home. When the cop ran Plowden's name, an active warrant came up, a 2013 summons for skateboarding in Union Square Park. After Plowden told Lois the warrant and summons had been dismissed in Manhattan Criminal Court three months earlier, the officer allegedly asked Plowden if someone could come get his dog because he was going to be arrested for being in the park after dark. I explained that the summons was cleared up. I wasn't even in the country at the time, said Plowden, who filed a lawsuit in Brooklyn Federal Court on Friday. Plowden, a married father who served in Afghanistan and now works as an occupational therapist for special ed students, was taken to the 77th precinct after cops dropped off Lily Cat his pit bull terrier mix at his Dean, Saint, Dean Street home. While Plowden was in custody, Lois, who is white, allegedly made disparaging comments to Plowden, an African-American man that included, your culture is more problematic, more violent, and more prone to crime. And you wouldn't have stopped and detained, you wouldn't have been stopped and detained if you'd been a white guy in a park at night on the Upper East Side. I started to tear up because I'm a 35 year old black man, a veteran with no criminal record. I said, please do not do this. Why are you doing this? He started to laugh and asked if I was crying. I said, no, this is simply emotional. Lois also allegedly spent much of the night lecturing him with pro-Trump rhetoric, bragging that the president elect will support policing in minority neighborhoods and end the abuse of resources like food stamps and welfare by ghetto residents, the lawsuit says. Police officers are entitled to their political views, but harassing a prisoner confined to a precinct cell and subjecting him to racist political bravado is unacceptable. The officer, of course, could not be reached for comment. And uh, he apparently was in another case that was settled for $25,000 um for participating in an assault and fabrication of false criminal charges so this particular police officer has a history of doing these things i've always treated officers with respect i never thought this would happen to me as a result of the arrest plowden's job as an occupational therapist is in limbo the department of education has declared him ineligible for assignments until it looks into the case according to the lawsuit. Um, and I hate to say that this is so common in black America that many people have just stopped being surprised. <laughs> but this kind of thing is common in black America that many people are not even surprised by this, right? So let's back up a little bit and talk about some of the things that is problematic about what is happening. Now, um, we on a spiritual side have been warning people for quite some time mm -hmm. that we're getting ready to see an administration that literally wants to roll back the time. They want to roll it back to what they call a quote unquote golden age of America. They want to roll it back to a time uh, where they felt like things were much better for white Americans. But if you actually look at that time frame and they're talking 1950 to 1957, if you look at that time in our country, things were actually not that much better for poor white Americans. So what are they actually talking about? They're talking about wanting to roll things back to a time before there were equal rights for 
black Americans, okay? And so what you have here, you have an abuse of power. Um, the gentleman, the officer, once he took him in and once he recognized that actually um, in the article, the court actually did verify that the charge was dismissed, the summons was dismissed, and they apologized to him. But the result is now he has an arrest record that is going to affect his employment that was doing well before this false charge. So now his employment is in limbo. And most of the people, most people in this country know um, the struggle that many veterans have with actually getting a job, getting a home, and all of those different kinds of things. So now this man's personal life, professional life has all been affected because someone felt like abusing their power. They felt like taking it upon themselves to make an example out of him in some ways and then to be falsely arrested and falsely held and having someone take that opportunity to disparage you, disparage your race, <laughs> um, talk about stereotypes and tell you about what Trump is going to do is just totally, totally reprehensible and unacceptable. But I want to warn you, you're going to see more of this kind of behavior um, <clears throat> because we have people in this country, unfortunately, that are emboldened by the kind of spirit that has been released in our country, which is a disregard for blacks, for minorities, for people with disabilities, for women, all of those different kinds of things. So you're going to see a increase in this. And I'm just telling people, stay safe, stay aware, avoid, um, <clears throat> excuse me, as much as possible, avoid um, being in conflict with people in public because this is not going away. Um, it is something that you're going to see an increase of this kind of behavior. Um, one thing I am happy about is the number of uh, people who are being exposed for their behavior and being fired immediately and removed out of their post so that they cannot use these posts uh, in the future to come against people that don't look like them. All right. So let's take another look. Let's take a look at our next news story today. Obama commute sentences. President Obama on Tuesday began commuting sentences uh, for Chelsea Manning, the Army intelligence analyst convicted of a 2010 leak that revealed American military and diplomat diplomatic activities across the world. Um, many people say that Chelsea Manning should have never been arrested to begin with because she was actually following uh, military policy, which is to protect us from enemies, both foreign and domestic. And so she actually exposed some of the abuses that were happening in the military in regards to um, extrajudicial killings, as well as um, going outside of going outside of the bounds of what you were supposed to be doing with uh, prisoners. And so she exposed that and many people say it was more so an embarrassment to the country and administration, which was why she was given a sentence of 35 years. Well, that sentence has now been commuted or shortened to five months. And so she will be out. He actually will be out in May. Um, Chelsea Manning, if you don't know, is a male who was going through a um, sex change process and I think um, he went he was actually Bradley Manning then became Chelsea Manning and then I believe the latest is that he's going to return back to being Bradley Manning so confusion on that side but the but the uh, commuting of the sentence is what we're focused on today another sentence that he has commuted and this came out uh, later 
on yesterday. Obama commute sentence of Oscar Lopez Rivera, a member of the Puerto Rican militant group. Um, holding Puerto Rican flags free Oscar Lopez Rivera signs dozens of community members and former revolutionaries on Tuesday filled a small park community center. The celebration on Chicago West Side came just hours after President Obama commuted his sentence for his role in an organization in the 70s and early 80s that plotted bombings, prison escapes, and armed robberies in an effort to secure independence for Puerto Rico, a territory of the U.S. Obama finally listened and let Oscar out of prison, sang the crowd, which alternated between the joyous chant, que bonita bandera, Spanish for what a beautiful flag. In addition to community members and political organizers, two of Lopez's siblings turned out to celebrate, as did former FALN members who had spent time in prison. Lopez's brother, Jose Lopez, said the commutation has historical significance. Lopez, 74, will leave prison by May 17. In recent years, his cause had been taken up by popular culture figures religious leaders, and political luminaries. Former President Jimmy Carter, Pope Francis, and U.S. Representative Luis Gutierrez of Illinois' 4th District supported his release, as did South African Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Reaction to Tuesday's action by Obama, <clears throat> excuse me, one of more than 200 commutation, commutations granted by the president on Tuesday went well beyond Chicago. I wish I was with every Puerto Rican in Chicago right now, one person tweeted on Tuesday. Lopez was the leader of FALN, the Spanish acronym for the Armed Forces of National Liberation. He was found guilty in the U.S. District Court in Chicago in 1981 of weapons, explosives, and conspiracy charges. And he had been sentenced to 55 years in prison. He received an additional 15 years in 1988 after he was convicted of plotting to escape from federal prison. His goal was a free and socialist Puerto Rico. The group was primarily active in New York and Chicago and claimed responsibility for more than 140 bombings since 1974. The group's most notorious bombing occurred at New York's landmark Francis Tavern in 1975. Four people were killed and 60 people injured. Lopez was not convicted of any role in that attack, but some still hold him responsible because of his ties to the nationalist group. I'm willing to forgive, but he never once said he was sorry and showed no more remorse at all. He's an old man and he'll get to live his life free and hopefully he can live with the sins he committed and that he'll answer one day to a higher power than us for whatever he did. So, um, you know, there are some question about whether or not he actually committed the bombings, but he was uh, serving a 55 year sentence for any part that was um, played in it that he suspected. Anyway, he will be out in five months. Now, there's also a petition since Obama is commuting sentences. There's also a petition. And let me go to that. There's also a petition out for um, Obama because he has one day left officially in office to uh, pardon ex-Detroit Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick. And so many people are looking at this. And again, the black community is looking and they're saying, OK, you know, Obama has pardoned some this the Puerto Rican guy who had some serious charges. He was, you know, convicted, sentenced to 55 years. And then they're also looking at Chelsea Manning. And, you know, many people see that as a um, LGBTQ agenda, somewhat of uh, pardoning this transgender person after serving them with a 35 year sentence is now down to five months. And so now a petition has gone out that is urging President Obama to pardon ex-Detroit Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick. It says more than 15,000 people have signed change.org campaign to reduce the former mayor's 
28-year prison sentence. As President Barack Obama hands out clemency to hundreds of people given lengthy prison systems, <laughs> given lengthy prison sentences, excuse me, during the era of the war on drugs, thousands of people are signing a petition asking for the same for former Detroit Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick. Um, as of today, they have argued that his sentence on 24 federal criminal counts, including corruption in office, is excessive and unfair. Kilpatrick was convicted in March 2013, following a lengthy jury trial on charges that included bribery, extortion, fraud, and racketeering. The petition launched four months ago by a group calling itself People for the Release of Kwame Kilpatrick says the former mayor did wrong but the sentence is too harsh for the crime. He gave the city hope again, brought investments in. He truly did make a positive impact in a community that had been headed for destruction since the 50s because labor costs, white flight, and the decline of the big three automotive companies. We recognize that Kwame is not without fault and has done wrong and should have to pay for what he has done, but let us remember that we are not talking about a career criminal. We're talking about a man with multiple degrees who rose to mayor in one of the major cities. Instead of running and fleeing his city, he took the reins of a sinking ship and did a better job than anyone could have imagined. So there is a petition out there that is asking for President Obama to consider that former mayor. And many people feel like it's a waste of intelligence for him to just be sitting in jail for the next 28 years. So we'll see how that goes. Um, as far as President Obama's record for actually doing something specific for black people, um, I haven't seen it. <laughs> so, um, you know, I know people love him. They love his style. They love his fashion. They love the fact that he sings and dances. They love the fact that he's, you know, filled the White House with uh, soul, so to speak, you know, inviting black people in and artists in and in opening the White House in terms of entertainment and, you know, in terms of being a symbol for black America progress, he has been that. But in terms of actual real specific policies for black Americans that's going to make our lives better as a whole beyond his presidency, there is no record of that. All right. So that is the push for clemency for uh, at this time. So, so far on Tuesday, he commuted 200 sentences and two of the most widely uh, wide known was Oscar Lopez Rivera and Chelsea Manning. Last thing I want to talk about in terms of our news today is uh, Betsy DeVos, Betsy DeVos or Betsy DeVos. Um, she is our president-elect's pick for Department of Education. And uh, it's kind of some very, how shall I say this? It's very problematic. Two of the things that are problematic as she went through her Senate hearings on, uh, I believe it was yesterday, uh, two of the things that are problematic about what she said in, during her hearings is number one, Betsy said she would not rule out guns in school. And I don't mean like a resource officer having guns. I mean, like teachers having guns. Now, <laughs> considering that I was a teacher in the public school system and private school system, um, in alternative education and private elite education, in K through 12, Let's just say that some of these teachers don't need access to a gun. <laughs> I'm just going to be, I'm just going to put it like that. Some of these teachers don't need access to a gun. Some of them don't need access to a gun in their car. Some of them don't need access to being able to bring a gun on campus. 
because their temperament should not allow for them to have a gun in their possession. Um, and so that is problematic. You know, I can see where you're talking about the resource officers at a school being armed, but just to have it where anybody can be armed. Um, you have in some states, you have where, you know, teenagers are already armed or they're using um, firearms like hunting rifles and things like that. I can't imagine allowing them to bring guns on to school property or to even have it in their car. To me, I think that is, is problematic, her stance on that um, because of the gun violence that we have seen. And so during her hearing, she could not give a definitive answer that she would be against um, ruling out guns in school. So that's problematic. Problem number two, and these are, I mean, there were other things, but these were two big ones that um, I saw in the hearings. Problem number two is that she would not rule out def defunding public schools. She would not rule out defunding public schools. Well, what does that mean to free public education? What does that mean to the parent that's already working two or three jobs and therefore doesn't have an option like homeschooling your children? Although I love homeschool and I recommend it for those who can do it to do it. You know, it is a sacrifice, but it is beneficial. Um, where does that leave kids, you know, students who are in failing schools? OK, so your school is failing and my solution is going to be to shut your school down. As opposed to fund your school so that you can have the proper resources including teachers, materials, and all those different kind of things. Rather than do that, I'm just going to kind of shut your school down and say, mm, you guys are on your own. Um, I think we have to be aware and be mindful that if she is confirmed, parents, awesome. If she is confirmed, parents are going to really need to start thinking about what they're going to do concerning their children's education if she's confirmed. Um, because again, she said she's not going to rule out defunding public schools. And we already know across this country the shape that many public schools are in. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't understand why there's such a, a difference in going into a community or going into a city and you see this beautiful public school in certain areas and then you, you know, maybe drive a couple of blocks and you see this beat up, run down building in an area that's not too far from the beautiful public school. Well, part of that has to do with redlining. Um, your ability to move out of a certain neighborhood. Part of that also has to do with your income and the taxes that are paid within certain communities. So a lot of that factors into um, the monies that is going to be allocated to go towards your school district. And even more detailed than that can also be how the person who is super superintendent of your school is distributing the money, right? Because if you have a superintendent that tends to favor the more well-off in your district, in other words, they're going to allocate, they allocate some of those monies to go to districts that are already doing well. So if you have somebody that's leading your school district, that's allocating your funds in a way that the districts that need it are getting shortchanged and the districts that already have are getting more, you're going to see um, these differences in the school setting, in the school building, the upkeep of the school, um, the resources, the textbooks, people that they're willing to hire. Um, we have this saying kind of in, in uh, public school where you've got districts 
that will keep qualified teachers as substitutes and they won't hire them as actual full-time staff because they don't want to pay the salary and they don't want to pay the benefits. So what do they do? They get these teachers in who are qualified. They are certified by their state. They are degreed, but they have them working as substitute teachers. Now, a lot of people will not talk about this, but it's happening. They have them working as substitute teachers and they're going in and they may be working every day. They may be working a 40 hour week, but they're not getting the pay as a salary teacher. They're actually maybe making $15 an hour or $16 an hour and they're not getting benefits. So now you're jacking over the teachers that are actually qualified to be in these schools because you refuse to hire them as actual teachers and i have seen this happen over and over and over again and then on their job boards it will say looking for a teacher for x y and z when the reality is they're not looking they're not they have the teachers they're just using them as substitutes and and they're really um cheating the system so to speak and they're refusing to hire those who are qualified. So when I look out and I read articles about, oh, where are the teachers and where are the qualified staff? I can tell you where they are. They're substitute teachers many times. And the districts are refusing to hire them as teachers. They're keeping them as substitutes. They're cheating the system. They're cheating that teacher who has gone to school, gotten the education, taking the qualifying tests is certified and now they're being underpaid and the school districts are not paying them benefits that is what is happening so if you want a story go research that <laughs> all right so those are my stories at the at the for today i hope that uh i've given you some insight into what is happening and today's giveaway is now I would like to thank my friend from Brazil for commenting this today. And I would like to thank my super fan, Rochelle, for showing up today on our broadcast. Today's giveaway is a copy of my music CD. And this is the download card for it. And all you have to do to get today's uh, free giveaway is be the first person to email reach shante at gmail.com reach shante at gmail.com and tell me your favorite hymn your favorite hymn so that's all you have to do in order to get a free download card today i'm actually going to be giving away three of them so the first three people that email and tell me what their favorite hymn is at reachshante at gmail.com will receive a music download of my CD. All right. Well, I don't think that I'm going to get to my read aloud today, um, but I do believe that we covered some important news, and I hope that um, you all are having a great and wonderful day, that you're taking care of yourself. Um, this is winter, winter cold season here for us on uh, the in the northeast. And so I don't know where you are in the world today, but it is pretty chilly here. And we are trying to stay warm and uh, stay out of the cold and keep our bodies together. So I hope that you have a great and wonderful day today. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for joining us on this edition of Daring Dialogues. Take care and God bless.